when the fluid is coming when the primary urine is coming into the descending limb of Henle's tube initially it is isotonic to cortical fluid it is also isotonic to the outer fluid of medulla but when it proceeds downwards you can see there is increasing concentration of medullary fluid outside so concentration in the medullary fluid is more when compared to the concentration of renal fluid or primary urine so osmosis occurs considerable amount of water around 15 percent of water so it passes out from the descending limb of Henle's limb now when water is lost the concentration of the fluid gradually rises and by the time it reaches the hairpin bend of Henle's tube, the concentration of primary urine becomes isotonic to medullary fluid. So concentration of primary urine inside the Henle's tube becomes equal to the concentration of medullary fluid. That's why it is called isotonic. But when compared to the blood plasma, I told you blood plasma's concentration is around 300 milliosmolars per liter. So when compared to blood plasma, it is hypotonic, right? Now, such fluid, it has come, such fluid, it has come into the ascending limb. This, this is the ascending limb. It has got thin segment and thick segment. Now, then, the fluid is coming into the ascending limb, its concentration is 1200, but externally concentration gradually reduces. So there is some sodium chloride which is passively transported outside. Concentration of the primary urine here, it is around 1200, it is equal to the medullary interstitial fluid concentration. But when it is passing, going upwards, you can see there is decrease in the concentration of medullary fluid outside. So, passively some salts, they go outside. In the thin segment of ascending limb, passively some salts will leave outside. In the thick segment, actively, by active transport, more sodium chloride is pumped outside. So, a lot of salts are pumped outside. And by the time, it comes to the top, it has become hypotonic. The concentration is even less than 300. So like in the beginning, the concentration of the primary urine, again by the time it has reached at the beginning of the distal convoluted tubule, its concentration is less when compared to the... It's it has become less when compared to the cortical fluid. Now, in the initial region of distal convoluted tubule, small amount of sodium, some around 5% of sodium is actively transported. And in the same region, so that's by active transport. And wherever sodium is going, chloride ions will follow that. I am speaking at the beginning region, beginning region of the distal convoluted tubule. In the same region, the, under the influence of parathormone, calcium ions are absorbed. If, if by filtration, if any calcium is lost, that calcium is taken back into body under the influence of the parathormone. So that occurs at the beginning of the of the distal convoluted tubule. Now, when we have come to the terminal region, in the terminal region, so this area and in the collecting duct, we got two different types of cells. The cells are principal cells and intercalated cells. Principal cells are simple cuboidal epithelium without microvilli. Intercalated cells, they have got microvilli. Principal cells 
are simple cuboidal epithelium without brush border. Intercalated cells, they are simple cuboidal epithelium with brush border. There are more of principal cells, there are less of intercalated cells. So that is in the distal part of distal convoluted tubule, in the second half of the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct, you will see both of them. Out of these two, principal cells are more in number. Now principal cells have receptors for ADH and aldosterone. Two different hormones are acting on these cells. So when ADH, under the influence of ADH, water is reabsorbed. Remember water absorption here and here, some 85% of water absorption obligatory. It is unregulated. But in this part, in this part it is regulated. When I say regulated, it is regulated by hormones. And it depends upon the requirement of the body. If I am taking more water, more water is excreted. If I take less water, less water is excreted. But there is no change in this percentage of the water that is being filtered, this much percent, 85% reabsorbed. But the remaining water, how much of water has to be taken back into body, it, it depends on the body requirements. If more ADH is produced, more water is taken back. If less ADH, less water, that of course, so it depends upon my physiological conditions. Now, the same principal cells, they take in sodium and secrete potassium. And that is under the influence of aldosterone hormone. Principal cells are doing two functions there. They got receptors for antidiuretic hormone, ADH. ADH is a hormone produced from the posterior lobe of pituitary gland. So if ADH is produced, water is reabsorbed. Aldosterone is produced, sodium is taken back into body and potassium is secreted outside. So this total process is under the con control of principal cells. Now in the same area, we have got intercalated cells. Now we saw in the proximal convoluted tubule, for every one H plus ion, one bicarbonate ion is reabsorbed. Huh? For every one by H plus ion, which is pumped outside, out of the bicarbonate which is filtered here, one bicarbonate taken inside, one H plus ion is pushed outside. So here this is occurring, same process is also occurring there, but we have got specialized cells for that. They are called as intercalated cells. So in intercalated cells, for every H plus ion which is pumped outside, one bicarbonate is taken back into body. So intercalated cells are doing that function. So in this area, you can also see ammonium is being secreted, like in case of proximal convulsions. Here also, <coughs> ammonium is being secreted. That means H plus ions and ammonia are being secreted. Ammonia is coming from deamination of proteins. So that occurs here, there, also occurs there. So this is what is happening in the distal convoluted tubule. In the distal convoluted tubule, at the beginning, by active transport, around 5% of sodium chloride is taken back into body. Under the influence of parath hormone, calcium ions are taken. If calcium is present in, in that, it is taken. And when you come to the later half of distal convoluted tubule, we have two different types of cells, principal cells and intercalated cells. Principal cells are more in number when compared to intercalated cells. Principal cells are without brush border, whereas intercalated cells, they have brush border or microvilli.